what we are going to learn in today's lecture is the ratio analysis try and understand normally we have profit and loss account and balance sheet of a company how to prepare pnl account and balance sheet is a work of account subject is work of accountant as a financial manager i want to analyze position of this business i am not talking only about profitability i want to analyze this business whether i can analyze this business by this profit and loss account and balance sheet the answer is yes how we can analyze it uh, suppose in balance sheet current assets are 100 crores it is good or bad it is more or less we cannot say till the time we compare it with other figures so say current assets are 100 crores this figure is a nominal figure not compared with anything it is just a figure you cannot analyze anything from a nominal figures so what we do is say current asset is compared with current liabilities so we are dividing we are comparing it with someone say current liability is 50 crore now i can say something i can analyze something that my current assets are two times as compared to my current liability whether this ratio current assets divided by current liability is current ratio but my point right now is not to explain you current ratio my point right now is to explain you that to analyze any profit and loss account balance sheet always a relative measurement is required and ratio is always a relative measurement why numerator is compared with denominator so that we can make some sense so that we can analyze the position of the business sir how by this ratio we can analyze the position of the business that i am going to explain you but right now understand we can analyze position of the business not by nominal figures one more example say my cash balance is 50000 rupees whether it is more or less we cannot say whether it is good or bad we cannot say because it is a nominal figure we want a relative figure and so we find out various ratios which are related to profit and loss account and balance sheet and try to analyze our position of the business with help of the ratios we of learning the chapter try to understand first we will logically understand the ratio this is required to get a good knowledge in finance and for examination purpose you will mug up the ratios by see if you understand the ratio even mugging up process becomes very easy prepare a full fledged chart of all the ratios try to have an understanding of all the ratios and you can mug up the ratios and last point will be application in practical questions and the third part will be more of mathematics and ratio of less of ratio analysis there will be problem solving which will happen or uh, because of the ratios or because you are knowing the formulas of the ratios so we are going into first step and one of the most important step is logically understanding the ratios we are going to first category of ratios which are liquidity ratios please understand what happens to some of the businesses business might be earning huge profits 
बिकॉज दे माइट बी हैविंग यूज सेल्स बट दिस यूज सेल्स माइट बी ऑन क्रेडिट वॉट हैपन्स इज एंड इवन इट इज एट प्रॉफिट what happens is profitability might be higher but this is a problem with say this particular company x limited it is receiving money late and so is unable to pay creditors on time at least what in technical words we say in technic technically we say is the company is having a liquidity problem don't confuse it with profitability problem profitability problem is a different problem this company is earning huge profit but they are getting money late and they are not getting credit period from creditors so they will have to pay money early they can take a working capital loan from a bank but that also will be charged with interest well, what we can see about this company is a liquidity problem there is a liquidity problem in this com uh, company liquidity crunch the company is not having cash to pay its creditors at least on time how we can analyze a liquidity position of the company we can easily do it by liquidity ratios that are our first category of ratios and first ratio in liquidity ratio is current ratio what is current ratio current assets divided by current liabilities how we find out try to understand if this is our balance sheet there will be current assets like debtors stock cash other current assets in my company and that current assets amounts to 100 crores there are current liabilities like creditors bank overdraft which amounts to 50 crores what will be my current asset 100 crore current liability 50 crore what is my current ratio 2 what does this logically means it means current assets are double as compared to current liability logical understanding current assets are double as compared to current liability you will be easily able to pay your creditors on time why in near future or in cash balance you are having 100 crore in near future this you are going to receive in near future this you are going to pay so you are going to receive 100 crore in your near future but you are going to pay 50 crore in near future so you will be easily able to pay it so you are not having liquidity crunch you are not having liquidity problem your liquidity position is good your liquidity position is good see a current ratio of 10 so this is 100 crore and this is 10 crore what will be my current ratio current ratio will be 10 100 divided by 10 will be is equal to 10 my liquidity position is best not only good it is excellent it is best so 
higher the current ratio it is good for business this might be the understanding but the answer is no see i am saying higher the current ratio good is liquidity position this is correct but this is not correct that it is good for my business what i will tell you current ratio of 10 in the second situation why it is not good for business can anyone explain me i'll i'll come and explain you but can anyone explain me why current ratio of 10 is not good for a particular company all right no one so uh, let me do it yes yes sir current ratio ma stock aave bank aave cash balance aave to current ratio 10 no hoy na yes to ena matlab kaato aapna paase overstock che je sell nahi rato okay aur aapna paase cash ke bank balance etli che je aapna paase further invest nahi karta okay agree the the answer is uh, correct but let me just make it absolutely clear try to understand your asset side of the balance sheet this is your balance sheet and this is asset side of your balance sheet you might have heard in your 11th and 12th standard that goodwill should be written on top then comes a fixed asset and then comes investment and then comes current assets so on upper part normally we keep a fixed asset and in lower part we normally keep current assets you might have not put a question mark at that time why why we cannot write down cash at in first position and fixed assets a machinery in last position why it is a custom to write down a uh, fixed asset on upper side and current asset on lower side yes you want to give the answer yes sir yes yes sir because fixed assets are those assets which the form of business will uh, purchase at the start of the business or any any time at any point of the business any point of time between the business all right it will remain for long term and current assets they are only short term like cash balance will always changing every year to year stock will change year to year and other debtors and all other things will changing year to year oh even fixed asset will change year to year Sir? fixed asset will also change year to year you will not find any business which is having a stable fixed asset or the normally a growing company will always invest in in fi uh, fixed asset sir only depreciation will be not much more they will be buying more not selling or if sometimes selling they only occur but then the okay a fixed asset is for long but there that is a definition of fixed asset and current asset my point is why fixed asset is written first in prayas kushali sir it is liquidity current asset current liquidity my point is why it is written in priority fixed asset are written in priority and current assets are written on lower side i agree this is more liquid this is less liquid but that is a definition of fixed asset and current assets current assets are liquid assets and fixed assets are fixed assets anyone all right let me tell you fixed asset as far as business is concerned will be earning highest rate of return starting with goodwill and current assets will be earning lowest or no rate of return 
से अकाउंटेंट इज फाइंडिंग आउट हाउ मच माई मशीनरी इज रेट ऑफ रिटर्न इज द अकाउंटेंट इज फाइंडिंग आउट हाउ मच इज माई कैश रेट ऑफ रिटर्न ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इन करंट एसेट देर विल बी एसेट कैश वॉट इज रेट ऑफ रिटर्न ऑन कैश जीरो परसेंट वाई इफ आई कीप कैश बैलेंस ऑफ हंड्रेड करोड इन माई कैश बॉक्स फॉर द पीरियड ऑफ वन ईयर देन आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू अर्न वन रूपी इवन रेट ऑफ रिटर्न एंड सो कैश इज अर्निंग जीरो परसेंट रेट ऑफ रिटर्न How much bank current account is earning? Zero percent. How much debtors are earning? You might be charging some nominal interest on recovery of debtors, but still it is very less. It will be one to two percent per annum. So it will practically not be uh, uh, earning more rate of return. Now let me go to goodwill. fixed asset or an intangible assets goodwill which we write down in priority we are taught that goodwill should be written on the top of the asset side of balance sheet why goodwill try to understand uh, say a company nike nike manufactures a shoes say at 1500 rupees this is its manufacturing cost and it sells the shoes at 20000 rupees why do you think they are able to sell this shoes at a this enormous price or this huge margin profit margin because of goodwill how much nike has invested in goodwill not much amount but it is getting a huge rate of return from goodwill so try to understand upper side of asset side of balance sheet earns more rate of return lower side of asset side of balance sheet earns less or no rate of return cash and bank even sometimes a stock stock also does not earn much rate of return practically so you are taught at your lower standard that fixed asset should be written on top side goodwill on top and cash balance at last of the balance sheet now try to understand this will remain constant say 100 crore for as on 31st march uh, say 2023 your total borrowings are 100 crores uh, including creditors then it should be priority for the business out of this 100 crore keep more and more money in upper side of balance sheet and less money in lower side of balance sheet if you keep more money in lower side of balance sheet then you are keeping less money in upper side of balance sheet because your total on liability side is 100 crore so total on asset side will be 100 crore try to understand suppose i am keeping current assets of 80 crore then my fixed asset will be of 20 crore but if i am keeping current assets of 50 crore my upper side of balance sheet will be having 50 crores understand a current ratio of 10 current ratio of 10 basically means more money is invested in current assets which is good for profitability or not it is not good for profitability what does your profitability statement or a good decision making says is less money should be invested in current assets and more money should be invested in fixed assets let us understand one more balance sheet and summarize fixed asset current assets and current liabilities current liabilities are of 10 crores Try to 
अंडरस्टैंड करंट रेशियो ऑफ टेन करंट एसेट्स आर हंड्रेड करोड़ एंड फिक्स एसेट्स आर टू हंड्रेड करोड़ टोटल ऑफ बोथ द साइड इज ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड करोड़ द ब्लैक पेन इज हैविंग करंट रेशियो ऑफ टेन वॉट इज दिस मीन हाई लिक्विडिटी पोजिशन The liquidity position is high. Try to understand. Whenever creditors comes to us, we will be having money to pay them. I am not saying liquidity will do go down. Your liquidity will increase because you are investing in more liquid assets. High liquidity, but lower profitability. Why lower profitability? Because we know. This earns more rate of return, and this earns less rate of return. So you are investing at a place which gives you less rate of return. It's not giving you much rate of return, so you are low at profitability. Let us go to second point. In second point, my current assets are five crore. and my fixed asset are 115 crore current liability remaining 10 crores what is my current ratio is the 5 divided by 10 is 0.50 what does this mean there is a low liquidity people will come to take money from me but i will not be having enough money to pay on time so my liquidity position is bad but more amount is invested in fixed asset which gives me more rate of return so it will result into higher profitability all right so the chart is summarized like this higher the liquidity less is profitability and lower the liquidity higher is profitability my question to you is should you go for higher liquidity should you go for lower liquidity or should you balance between liquidity and profitability anyone we should balance between liquidity and profitability try to understand one liquidity ratio or current ratio basically means we will be able to cover our current liability so current ratio of 1 means we are we will be able to cover our current liability but what happens say current ratio 1 what does current ratio 1 means current assets are 10 crore current liabilities are 10 crore but it is possible that sometimes our debtors pay somewhat uh, late then we will have to pay our creditors even late and so there will be a liquidity problem and so some of the bank says that you are a good liquidity ratio is 1.33 so one you are covering your current liability and 0.33 is somewhat reason some of the bank says that 1.50 is a good liquidity or good current ratio so ideal current ratio 2 is not a good current ratio because more amount is equal this will happen profitability will be lowered if liquidity is sufficient the two liquidity is sufficient current ratio of 10 always means that you are having higher useless liquidity you don't need such a money try to understand if i am doing a small business and in my cash box i always keep 1 lakh rupees that is not a good profitability position that is good liquidity position but it is not good profitability position so current ratio of 10 is always bad for a company because there is a higher useless liquidity and your because of that higher liquidity your profitability is getting lowered i am summarizing my first formula 
that is the current ratio what is current ratio current assets minus current uh, divided by current liability number two quick ratio how to find out quick ratio is a quick asset divided by quick liability how to find out quick ratio understand what are quick assets it is current assets only but we consider all current asset except stock what are quick liabilities they are all current liabilities but it does not consider bank overdraft it does not even consider prepaid sir outstanding expenses and a uh, quick asset also does not consider prepaid expenses so practically the ratio is same if the ratio is same then it will give you same answer same position it will give you answer of your liquidity position whether it is good or bad the question comes is why stock is removed let us take one by one you are having current assets in form of a stock say 10000 debtors 20000 and cash and bank balance 40000 what is this 70000 what we have taken in quick assets it is the total current assets that is 70000 Minus a stock ten thousand. So in quick asset we'll be taking only sixty thousand. Practically it is we are not taking into consideration stock. Quick asset is current asset not considering stock. So in numerator we will write down sixty thousand. current liability minus bank overdraft i am writing down current liabilities creditors 50000 and bank overdraft 15000 creditors is 35000 and bank overdraft is 15000 what is total current liability 50000 what is a quick liability please understand i consider a total current liability 50000 minus bank overdraft 15000 let me change the figure to 20000 and creditors are 50000 total is 50000 so 50000 minus 20000 what is quick liability 30000 what is the quick liability quick liability is current liability not considering bank overdraft so if you don't consider bank overdraft what are your current liabilities creditors which are 30000 that is nothing but quick liabilities and i will be writing down my denominator 30000 and my quick ratio will be 2 sir what does it suggest it suggest the same thing what current asset suggest still the question remains open why sir i don't consider stock in numerator and bank overdraft in denominator please try to understand let me start with bank overdraft say i have incorporated a company in name of xyz limited a very good company and i took a bank overdraft from sbi of rupees of 50 lakhs 
why it should be treated as a current liability because bank overdraft is a short term loan it is repayable after one year so after one year you will have to repay this 50 lakhs rupees and so we consider it as a current liability but what practically happens what happens in actual life in actual life always bank overdraft will be extended beyond one year it will be again you see what bank sbi will say last year you were having bank overdraft of 50 lakhs we will enhance you to 55 lakhs next year we will enhance you to 60 lakhs and believe me bank overdraft for a business is never closed first it was 50 then it was 55 then it is 60 when you are repaying back at no point of time you are repaying just interest so bank overdraft even legally it is a long term business or it is a long term loan practically uh, it is a short uh, it is a uh, sh sorry legally it is a short term loan but practically it is a long term loan it is not a short term loan we are not going to repay this 50 lakhs rupees actually back to sbi after one year after one year bank will extend this loan it will even enhance this loan and again give it to me so uh, uh, i am not repaying this back in one year i should treat it as a long term loan and right now we are talking about liquidity in liquidity we don't consider long term loan do we consider debentures no so we don't consider long term loan so on liability side we need to remove bank overdraft sir in asset side in numerator why stock is to be deducted please understand sometimes for a company the stock is slow moving we are going to learn turnover ratio today at that time also i'll explain you if the stock is slow moving say some of the stock if i'm manufacturing aeroplanes my stock will be sold probably in two years then it is it is legally my current assets but technically saying it is not my current assets so i am removing even stock considering it as very slow moving i am removing stock from my numerator quick ratio current assets minus stock minus prepaid expense which is one of the uh, expenditure in uh, asset in your balance sheet current liability minus bank overdraft minus outstanding expenses all right why prepaid expenses outstanding expenses are not removed from current assets and current liabilities respectively let me explain you outstanding expense see in a business normally people who are working in march will get their salary in april people working in april they will be getting salary in may so there are always outstanding expenditure for a company when this expenditure are going to be paid next month but next month again there will be an outstanding expenditure so this is never going to be closed this is not a liability which you, we need to pay sir we need to pay next month agreed but in next month again there will be again some new outstanding expenditure your salary will be unpaid next month also and it will remain constant and never be going to paid and so treating it as a short term liability is not good so we are removing it from short term liability same logic applies to prepaid expenses i am summarizing my quick asset ratio quick ratio is equal to quick asset divided by quick liability where quick asset is a total current assets minus stock minus prepaid expenses and quick liability is current liability minus bank overdraft minus outstanding expenses this was quick ratio third absolute cash ratio or absolute liquidity ratio How this is measured? In numerator, we take data, the stock, no, something which is purely cash. Cash plus marketable securities. Cash includes bank. Huh? 
so in numerator see what we take in numerator over here some of the current assets so what we take over here all the current assets what we take over here absolute cash assets anything which is cash or very equivalent to cash divided by current liabilities 